Uh, we are dealing with 25 crops of the grass cultivated fodder and uh, more than dozen of uh, your grasses and those grasses they uh, it is diversity means uh, where suppose the anjan grass that is sand grass sand grass grasses we have a three four species that sand grass species which we are uh, growing here that is sand grass setigeras where in arid zone it is uh, Satigeras, here in Senka ciliaris. So we have a diversity that temperate grasses, we have a gra grasses for arid zone, we have a grasses for semi-arid zone. So these are the, the different classification we are having and also cultivated fodder. Cultivated fodder also there is a diversity. These are the zone barsim oat is, the, is grown and for rainy season crop that is um, your maize, sargam, these are the hub we can grow. If you go uh, to uh, Rajasthan and uh, other belt, Goar is the crop and also palm millet. Okay. So these are the crops. Lushan in western, western region, Lushan, uh, Gujarat and Maharashtra part, Lushan is Ravi crop. Lushan, we, we generally, the area in this north is very less. So these are the diversity of the crops and also if you go to eastern and northeastern, rice bean is one crop which you can uh, generally you will not find in this zone but rice bean is northeastern cowpea you can find everywhere cowpea is also fodder you know the gdp contribution of the livestock it is much much better than the higher than your agriculture okay now during this situation, this type of situation, one month drought or midterm drought like this, your crop may fail, but livestock is the only thing which will give a, uh, some income to the farmers. And to, to achieve this income, you need a green fodder. So green fodder. So this is, this is the significance that green fodder, if we assure green fodder for the livestock during, during uh, uh, this your drought period so you can expect higher income even during drought period from the livestock we have a perennial fodder perennial fodder suppose this is nb hybrid guinea nb hybrid guinea and anjan grass jo sand grass we call it sand grass that can be grown even that performs better during the drought season because it it, it is propagated through the rooted slip or stem once it is established it can last for five years, okay. So in a, in, a, in a year or period of severe drought, you can see a green foliage of these grasses. And we have demonstrated here in Bundelkhand, maybe more than 2000 in the farmer's field and the farmers are very happy. They are, they are happy because uh, out of 2000, maybe more than 1000 farmers now, the first time they, are, they have seen this uh, type of grasses. Once they are rearing livestock, definitely they are thinking for their green fodder. Now in India, 60 to 70 percent cattle feed uh, we, we, we use, that is the source is your uh, crop residue. Okay, either rice, paddy rice in our eastern and northeastern rice, rice residue and north uh, in the wheat, wheat bhusa or wheat uh, residue. Now uh, farmers, if they want to in increase their income, they, those farmers who are use, uh, mixing green fodder with that husa, they are getting higher yield, higher milk yield. They con this concept they are having, but where to get green fodder? We have given a much awareness program through our Keshi Vidgan Kendri across the country. Through 100 KVK, we have given awareness program and also demonstration of the farmer's field, good variety and also round the year fodder production and also silage making. And Bundelkhand, we have adopted 84 villages. We are working on 84 villages 
under the project Mera Gao Mera Gaurav and also other Chara Gao. Okay, so this is this is the this is how we are uh, helping farmers in Bundelkhand, and you will see that in 2000 farmers field you will get now this perennial fodder either raising either in the on the barns or maybe sp uh, space in the kitchen garden or those who can spare some of the land it is there. <laughs>